Thanks for joining us on Bear News. I'm Emily Carr. And I'm Kristen Scovillage. Vice President Joe Biden says victims of Colorado floods can help count on federal aid to help them rebuild their lives. Biden visited northern Colorado on Monday and joined Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper and Federal Emergency Management Agency Administrator Craig Fugate um, to talk about how the flood ravaged areas. Biden's tour included Lyons, Jamestown, Estes Park, and Big Thompson Canyon. After the tour, they applauded the local cooperation. About the sacrifices individuals have made, about the sense of community, about how people pull together is pretty amazing, but not at all surprising. Biden said the federal government has already released $35 million in aid to northern Colorado communities. That much will be needed. And he said federal aid will be available. There will be help. It will take some time in some of your cases, but immediate help for shelter and the rest is available. FEMA is prepared to help with temporary housing, home repairs not covered by insurance, medical expenses, and even transportation costs. After the devastation of the floods, the residents of Evans are finally able to pick the cells up with how many resources will help. Bear News reporter Jocelyn Acosta Martinez is at the press conference located inside the Evans Community Complex City to help recovering victims. Neighbors, friends, and family have come together in search of how and where to start this new beginning. Lyle Oxiger, mayor of Evans, initiates today's press conference. He talks about the types of resources that's being offered to the residents of Evans, as well as how to get in contact with them. We are so sorry you have to be here, but we're glad that you came to get the information that we will be able to help you with. We have assembled a large group of people here today to provide you information that will assist you in recovering from this situation. I can uh, start with the good news. As of 10.01 this morning, uh, the city of Evans is now flushing with pride. I'd like to thank the residents of Evans for your patience over the last eight days. Uh, we thought this might take 10, uh, but on day eight, uh, we're able to restore operations. I can't tell you how proud I am to be your city manager and see how this community has come together to help each other and the patience that you've shown over the last eight days. I know we've got a long way to go to completely recover from this. Uh, a lot of work ahead of us. Once areas of East Evans that were affected by the flood were safe to access, we began inspecting and tagging homes. Unfortunately, we found a number of homes were damaged and significantly damaged and therefore deemed unsafe with a tag like this, an orange tag, placed upon the home. Many of the homes with an orange tag placed on there will require further structural analysis before we can release it for habitation. Many of the homes within Bella Vista and Eastwood Village had suffered very significant structural damage. Reporting from the city of Evans, I'm Jocelyn Acosta Martinez, Bear News. Thanks, Jocelyn. The Colorado Department of Transportation is pushing hard to rebuild roads damaged by the recent floods in northern Colorado. CDOT says four additional contractors have been hired to build either permanent repairs or temporary detours on state highway routes. Construction is expected to begin within days and should be completed by December 1st. The four roads or areas affected are U.S. Highway 34 between Glade Road and Estes Park, which will involve through Big Thompson Canyon, State Highway 7 between Lyons and Estes Parks, which will be also a temporary repair. Several highways east of I-25 involving both temporary and permanent repairs, 
and State Highway 72 between State Highways 93 and 119, which involve both temporary and permanent repairs through Coal Creek Canyon. A major repair to U.S. Highway 30, 34 between 37th Street and Colorado Road 49 East of Greeley is underway. In a prepared release, CDOT said the repairs are necessary to restore mobility to local state roads. In a related development, Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper named an infrastructure recovery force to help with reconstruction of state roads. The force will coordinate and assist local governments as they work to reestablish links between state and local roads, bridges, and other infrastructure components. In making the announce announcement, Hickenlooper said the task force will have three primary objectives, speed, efficiency, and improvement to the transportation system. It's no secret Colorado has been experiencing a lot of precipitation in the past few weeks. Bear News meteorologist Paul Ford has your first look at weather to see just how much more rain we should expect. Paul? It is no secret, Kristen. We've had a lot of rain lately, but luckily today it's a beautiful day at 72 degrees. Right now the humidity is at about 41%. Look to the, for that to improve get even higher tomorrow and right now the winds are blowing from the south at nine miles per hour. Now going back to the flood, the National Weather Service recently released this graphic about the floods that happened about two weeks ago. This, these graphics are trying to show that we had over 1,000 times more rain in the month of September than we normally get. And even parts that are darker in this map were almost to 2,000 times. That is how serious these floods were. Coming up in weather, though, we're going to talk about the chance of having a little more rain on the way, which might not be so great for us. And we've got your game day forecast. Back to you guys. Thanks, Paul. Coming up after the break, we've got information on some new students to UNC. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. A big update has come to those of you who own an I Apple iPhone. It's called iOS 7, and Bear News' Paul Ford, meteorologist, talks about what it contains in this week's app wrap. On September 18th, Apple unveiled their new operating system for the iPhone named iOS 7. It brought plenty of changes to the Apple iPhone, and we're going to take a look at them right now. There have been many changes to iOS 7, and today we're just going to highlight a couple. First, you may have noticed that the new Apple operating system is very pleasing on the eyes. Every app that is native to the phone has been reworked from the ground up, from the calendar to the weather app, even the compass app. It may take some time getting used to, but the changes are well needed. Next up is Control Center. No need to close your app, find your settings, and then go to them just to turn off your Wi-Fi. From the control center, you can control screen brightness, Bluetooth, and even your music. Plus, much more is accessible even when you're playing your favorite game on your iPhone. Finally, Apple has introduced a new way to listen to your music. It's called iTunes Radio. This is Apple's attempt at trying to take down such services as Pandora and Spotify. iTunes Radio lets you discover new music in ways that have never been done before. It will look at your iTunes library and purchase music and help you find new music that you may come to love. You can sort it by genre or by specific artist, and it will give you some specific music based on the choices you make. You can skip it if you hate it, or even tweak the station based on the genre you chose. Apple is looking to take down Pandora, and while it's not quite there yet, it looks like that this is a good start. Those are only a few of the changes to Apple's iOS 7. To check out all the changes, you'll have to download it yourself. It's supported on the iPhone 4 or later, the iPad 2 or later, or the iPod Touch 5th generation. For all the apps that you need to know, I'm Paul Ford, Bear News. Thanks, Paul. It may seem that there are more international students around campus. If you thought that, you're right. 400 in five foreigners have currently taken courses at UNC this fall. They come from countries such as Italy, China, and Saudi Arabia. Altogether, there are 50 nationalities represented at the university. This year's numbers have broken a record. All the exchange students came here with their own expectations and dreams. I wanted to do it for the experience because I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be coming back to America, but if I do, it'd be cool to know some, uh, some more people. Um, at least like, you can get some, what they say brothers, I say mates out of this, so 
yeah, getting more mates out of it. Korean people once want to run American culture because Korean people want to have open mind. I decided to come to improve my English and also it's like a personal challenge. Um, meeting new people, studying. I really like food because it's really big and <laughs> it's like all time eating. But finally I go to Spain with like 20 kilos more. <laughs> <laughs> the first days of school help them to get used to the American university system while developing new friendships and maybe enjoying a slice of traditional pizza. Although there has been an increase in international students to UNC, freshman enrollment has decreased. A sea of over 12,000 students hurried to their first set of morning classes after a summer away. The university eagerly welcomes new, old, and transfer students to the campus while the visitor's center and admissions counselors are hard at work helping potential students become bears. Enrollment at UNC is up, but there seems to be a decline in freshman enrollment this year. Jody Minter tackles the issue that we've done to com combat this. One is um, we are one of the more affordable four-year colleges in Colorado, so it's continuing to promote that and continuing to let incoming freshmen know that we are very, very affordable four-year institution here in Colorado. Um, the second thing is we have um, just started to advertise some of our new scholarships for this upcoming year, which is something that we're all very excited about um, in order to help students because we don't want finances to be the reason that they're not here at UNC, and so we're really trying to combat that and um, just try to make it more affordable for students both through academic scholarships, need-based scholarships, just scholarships as a whole has really um, risen to help out students to make it more affordable. Um, and then just getting out in the schools as often as possible. We've hired on three more um, admission counselors or three new admission counselors this year and we're really excited for them and what they're going to have to offer to this team and it's just us getting out there and getting the word out about how great UNC is and um, how affordable UNC is and just um, letting students know that we're available and um, ready to help them when they're ready to apply. Admission counselors are hard at work recruiting new students. UNC students kicked off the school year at this year's Aubon Dance Festival where they enjoyed free food, music, and got to experience a different culture. UNC students gathered at the Cole House to participate in this traditional Japanese dance festival. The dance honors the spirits of ancestors who have moved on. The festival is celebrated by Japanese communities around the world. The event was set up by the Asian Pacific American Student Services. This was their first time planning the event. Paul, it's been really nice lately. Will this warm spree continue through the weekend? Well, we did have some cold air move in recently, and we do have a chance for rain going into tomorrow evening. But the good news is we will stay in the 60s and the 70s. But I'll have your forecast for this weekend and more after the break. Welcome back to Bear News. I'm meteorologist Paul Four. It's a shot outside our studios right now. As you can see, not a cloud in the sky. It's a beautiful day out here. Looking at the forecast right now, or the radar right now, you can see this cold air had moved in recently, just dropping us a little down to the 60s in parts of Colorado, but not too bad. This low pressure system over here is going to be a bit, tr bit of trouble going into the next day. As you can see in the radar right now, near Meeker and Craig, we've got a little bit of rain system going on right now, and that will move to the southeast as we head into tomorrow into the evening. Temperatures right now, though, we got 66 in Denver. If you head to the southeast right now, looking at Dodge City and Oklahoma City, we've got temperatures in the 90s. Don't you wish you were there? <laughs> temperatures around the nation, though. We do have some 80s if you go to the south. But if you're in the mountains, we're still looking at temperatures into the 70s. Temp high for today was about 72 degrees, a bit above average, luckily not to our record high of 91 degrees. Looking at our low this morning, recorded around 6 this morning, we hit about 46 degrees. Temperatures for tonight, though, we actually will hit 46 again. If you head to the south, we're going to see temperatures into the 50s. If you're in the mountain range, you might see temperatures drop down to the lower 40s, even into the 30s. Temperatures for tonight, though, we're seeing it still being pretty mild at about 7 o'clock tonight as we hit around 67 degrees. That will drop for your morning commute, though, as we are into the lower 50s, even maybe upper 40s. Then tomorrow's forecast, we are looking at a little bit of rain. We've got rain maybe 
starting around after one o'clock, but we should be done with it by about midnight. We're not looking a lot of rain, but there are parts of the metro area that might be experiencing a little more rain. So hopefully those rivers have settled down because we do not need any more rain. The biggest problem for tomorrow, though, is we're going to be seeing some gusty winds at anywhere between 16 to 21 miles per hour, but we could see gusts up to about 30 miles per hour tomorrow. Then the weekend's forecast, we will warm up on Saturday going at a high of 68 degrees. And then Sunday, we're back in the 70s at about 75 degrees. Final, uh, the forecast for the week, we've got temperatures in the 70s. We might see a few cloud coverage on Wednesday and into Thursday. And we might even drop down to about 59 degrees on Friday. So you might want to bring a light jacket as you're heading into the end of next week. Now we've got a football game tomorrow. We're going to see temperatures if you're heading there when the gates open at about uh, at 11 o'clock, we're going to see temperatures at around 54 degrees. We will warm up by the time of kickoff when it will be about 63 degrees. And by the end of the game, it should be plenty warm at about 68 degrees. And the best part about all of that is we're going to see clear skies. Now, I know someone who else is looking for the, forward to the football game, and that's our sports anchor, Rachel Turnock. You bet, Paul. <laughs> Coming up in sports, the UNC football team had a very special guest attend the game on Saturday. Learn more about who it is after this commercial break. UNC football returned home to face the University of Northern Iowa Panthers after a tough 35-7 loss in Wyoming to the Cowboys. The Bears fell behind early after a UNI touchdown in the first quarter. Sawyer Cole Morgan connected with Chad Owens for a 7-yard touchdown pass. The Bears responded with a good drive of their own, but a missed field goal from kicker Dave Eden kept the Bears off the board. A late rally at the end of the first half was cut short after backup quarterback Tim Tancic threw an interception to UNI defensive back Charles Brown. UNC got off to a good start in the second half after running back Darius Graham punched one in from four yards out. Unfortunately, it was all UNI from here. David Johnson ran one in from 18 yards out to put the Panthers up 20-7. Two field goals from UNI kicker Tyler Sh excuse me, Shevertson in the fourth, put the game out of reach for UNC. The final score in this one, Northern Iowa 26, University of Northern Colorado 7. The homecoming game will be this Saturday at 1.35 p.m. against Southern Utah at Nottingham Field for the first Big Sky Conference game of the season. The UNC volleyball team headed up north last weekend to take on the two Montanas. The first, the first match took place in Missoula against the Montana Grizzlies, which was also the first Big Sky match of the season for the Bears. Kendra Cunningham totaled nine kills, and right below her, Brianna Strong with eight, contributing to the .183 hitting percentage for the Bears. Montana's outside hitter, Kayla Reno, totaled 14 kills Friday night to help give the Grizzlies a .245 hitting average. Montana also totaled 11 blocks over the Bears' six. The Grizzlies swept the Bears in this one, taking the 3-0 victory. Did the loss against the Grizzlies stop the Bears from going hard in the second match against Montana State? Well, the Bears have not lost to the Bobcats since 2005 and made sure to keep that winning streak going. UNC's offense shined bright in this match. Three Bears made it to double digits last Saturday in kills. Junior middle blocker Bianca Strong had a career high of 15 kills, Andreas Bostat with 14, and Kendra Cunningham with 10. The Bears freshman setter Ashley Guthrie set a record herself with 48 career high assists. This, mar this match marks the first Big Sky win for the Bears, bringing their overall record to 5-7 and seven and 1-1 one and one in the Big Sky. Bears woke up bright and early Sunday morning to prepare for their first home game in three weeks. The Texas A&M Aggies came to Butler Hancock Sunday night with a 7-3 and three record. The Aggies got an early lead by scoring three back-to-back -back points in the first set. Bears head coach Lindsey Oates does what's expected and takes an early timeout. After that, the Bears showed some life. Middle blocker Brianna Strong set another career high of 19 kills this time. They don't call her Bree Strong for nothing. Here's a nice setup between freshman setter and Ash Ashley Guthrie and Strong for the kill. Strong shines again to get the kill to win the first set for the Bears. Second and third sets belong to the Aggies. Outside hitter Sierra Patrick totaled 17 kills in this match. She became almost unstoppable for the Bears. Bears rallied near the end of the fourth set. From a float by Strong, a block by outside hitter Alyssa Wilson, and an error by the Aggies, but they just couldn't pull through. Texas A&M took this match in a 3-1 victory. Be sure to come out to Butler Hancock tonight for a match against Idaho State University at 7 p.m. 
The UNC soccer team has definitely been staying busy as well. The team traveled to Boulder, Colorado on Sunday to take on Stony Brook. Senior Ambry Bellin, excuse me, Ambry Bellin got the winning goal for the Bears for a one to nothing victory. Both teams totaled eight shots on goal in the first 20 minutes of play. Natalie Dadamio, Danielle Bertzall, and Tara Rickenbach were named to the Omni Hotels Colorado Women's Soccer Classic All Tournament team. UNC is 4-3-2 overall, and their first Big Sky Conference game will be at Portland State tomorrow at 2 p.m. Every, fo every football game counts and gives off some type of impact on every player, coach, and fan. Last Saturday's game touched every person, all because of one 14-year-old boy. For those of you who don't know who exactly I'm talking about, well, I was fortunate enough to be at that game Saturday and feel the emotional impact he has on everyone. Is Austin Irvin a kind and loving 14-year-old boy who suffers from a rare seizure disorder, averaging between 80 to 100 seizures every day. But this life-threatening illness does not stop him from having the biggest smile on his face. Austin returned to UNC for Live Like Austin Day after visiting the Bears in April. He had the chance to be on the sidelines during the game. It's easy to see how much he loves being there and how much the team loves having him there. For those of you who did not attend the game, Live Like Austin t-shirts were seen everywhere, and that's something his father, Kurt, truly appreciates. It's really incredible to see his name on people's shirts who I don't know. It just speaks to the heart of UNC. Uh, there's, you know, it restores my faith in humanity. Austin also has a shirt of his own. He became a UNC Bear in April and wears a jersey with the number one on back. The Bears always have positive things to say about Austin and what it's like for him to be at the games. Head coach Ernest Collins truly admires what Austin has done. He's a special kid. That's all I can say. He's a special kid and I'm glad he's a part of our program. This young boy with a big heart is changing lives of others every day. And his father feels the same way about UNC and what the Bears have done for his son. I want to thank the school and the coaching staff and all the people who did everything. The, these guys who sponsored the t-shirts. and It's just absolutely amazing. So from the bottom of my heart, from Austin and I, thank you. If you would like to help Austin out, visit www.livelikeaustin.com to donate and find out how else you can get involved. You know, he was just the sweetest boy. He really was. I met him, and he, he just always had a smile on his face. He's such a sweetheart. Such an inspiring story. After the break, we've got your Pinterest pick of the week. Stick around. We'll be right back in 60 seconds. Let's take a look at our Pinterest pick of the week. This is a simple yet cute way to think about how to live a stress-free life through the end of your week. Having a healthy body plus a healthy mind equals having a happy life. We all know how hard things might get for everyone, but be sure to keep these two simple concepts in mind because we all deserve to be happy, right? Yeah, it's a good message. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this evening. We'll be back next week. Until then, stay up to date on our Facebook page, Bear News 98. Be sure to like us. Have a great week.